Uh, look, you know, a lot of people like me, in fact, most people in this country don't smoke. Uh, most people in this country would probably like not to be around smokers. Everyone in this country knows they are cancer sticks and are bad for you, but we still have some people who smoke. Um, should we bring in a ban that affects, well, children now, but who will be adults in a few years, where we have a situation where two adults born, not even just months apart, but like hours apart, one can be legally allowed to buy a legally sold product and one would be banned from buying it. Is that a sensible law? Yeah, I think I think this is a good idea. Um, I think um, the context for this policy is that the economy that we have in the UK at the moment is is suffering from poor population health that's been decades uh, and years in the making. Um, we have an NHS that's struggling quite badly in terms of sustainability, um, tobacco. Uh, and cigarettes are the only consumer product that kills two thirds of its users when 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 used as intended. Um, and look, you have to put the dividing line of a policy somewhere. You can't have a blanket ban um, without any thought for those that currently smoke. It's an addictive product, um, so you do need that line somewhere. Um, but I don't think that problem undermines this sensible idea. It's good for well, the economy. I good mean, for the NHS. again, everyone's. I think everyone. I mean, everyone right thinking should be opposed to children smoking. That's why it's illegal for children to smoke, and that's why the ban on buying uh, cigarettes where it was raised from you know the year the year you could buy them from the age sixteen to age eighteen. I think pretty much nobody opposed that. Perhaps probably some seventeen-year-olds who already smoked. Um, I'm I'm genuine. I'm really anti-smoking. However, a lot of people are worried. This is you know thin end of the wedge stuff. This is slippery slope stuff that actually. When we get to the point where we've got this law actually in force, in a few years' time, there is an adult in a shop wanting to buy a legally sold product and someone born a few weeks, a few hours, a few days, a few years ahead of them is able to buy them and they're not. This is going to be a nonsense. Now, will the solution then be dump this silly law? It doesn't work. You can't do you have a law that affects some adults and not others. Or will the solution be let's ban it for everybody? And if that is the solution, What's the next thing that's banned? So it, it, I, I don't think it's slippery slope. I think the number of people for whom that scenario that you've just outlined, um, it, it, it will affect them for will be perishingly small. Um, so the thing to remember with this policy is that the vast majority of its impact will happen in the first 10 to 15 years, i.e. most people that start smoking are teenagers that go on to regret it quite profoundly in later life. What you probably won't get is a load of 30 year olds in say 15 years kind of desperately trying to start smoking that, that that's just not how it works um so what you actually have is a very small number of people that are still addicted to, to nicotine by the time they're 30 under this policy but they have quite uniquely and this is why i think this policy is is possible today in a way that it wasn't previously they have alternatives in terms of nicotine that weren't on the market in a prominent way kind of 10 15 years ago uh, in the form of non-combustible products like vapes. So in fact, there's a ready, readily made alternative for them if, if, if in small numbers they do still have a nicotine addiction. Yeah, I mean, look, so I think- And it's amazing it's to me how many people who are anti-smoking also very, very anti-vaping. I'm not pro-vaping, but it certainly seemed to be a very useful way for a lot of people I know who'd never ever been able to give up smoke, smoking to be able to give up. So it seems to me the crackdown on that has been quite bizarre as well. But you know as well as I do, there are gonna still be people who want to buy cigarettes and they're gonna be buying them on the black market. It's already huge. If you think most people living on council estates on benefits are paying 16 quid for a packet of facts, you know, think again, they're not. They're getting them on the black market already. We're just going to be expanding that black market. Now, as much as I don't want anyone buying cigarettes, don't want anyone smoking, we have to face the reality. We saw what happened with prohibition in the United States. We see what's happening to a certain extent with, with drugs that are not so widely, uh, you know, demanded. But there are still, you know, there's still a good percentage of people in this country who smoke, who want to smoke, and who are going to want to smoke in a few years' time when they're adults. They're going to get those on the black market. Encouraging criminality, losing the taxation that helps pay for treating lung cancer and heart disease as a result of smoking, is that actually a good solution to the problem? Well, there's lots, lots to unpick there, Julia. I mean, the, the first thing to say is the taxation that's created from cigarette sales does not account for the combined cost of both the NHS's cost, but also the economic cost of people that are sick before the retirement age and therefore not, not but it, producing oh, but, 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 but smokers helpfully dying before they can claim most of their pension does actually pay for it, actually. The, the economics oh, of this it, are very, it, it, very it clear. Because, smokers because smokers people, overall people, claim less. They don't live as long. They don't. Pensions are the biggest single outlay uh, of, the, of the welfare state and it, they, they end up costing less.
That's not true, Julia, because we'd true. be much poorer if no one was alive to work. So um, we do need people to contribute to the economy. No, they, so that's, no, they are alive, um, but they don't claim their pensions for as long. That, that's yeah, well, the they, economic they, reality. Don't, they, don't, they don't reach retirement age, so the, the economy suffers. We have, you know, kind of today, uh, new data from the ONS, 3 million people out of work because of long-term sickness. That's, that's an absolutely kick. tremendous drag on the UK that's economy. That's not because so of it is, it, is, um, cost. It, is, it is partially down to smoking, um, but of course it's down to other public health threats as well. Um, look, in terms of the black market, I think in every case, the government uh, proposing a, a tobacco control policy, uh, industry-funded research and, um, and kind of some, some, some voices on the libertarian side of, of politics say the black market will emerge, it's not actually that big. And what you have in this instance is an alternative market for legal vapes that are a cheaper uh, alternative okay. to smoking that I think people will prefer. And I, I, I don't think you'll see a black market emerge. Well, we shall see well, who is right and who is wrong. Chris Thomas, I really appreciate it. He's for, are you joining us? He's uh -huh. from the IPPR. Thank you for that.